My name is Bonaventure. Welcome to our ICT class. Today we will look at computer hardware. In respect of computer hardware, we will look at the input devices and also processing devices, types of primary memories, secondary storage devices, output devices, communication devices, and we will also look at, in addition to that, we will also look at the factors that determine the processing power of a computer. We will also look at the acquisition of a computer, how to acquire a computer. So, we begin by input devices. There are many input devices, but the key ones are these. We have the keyboard. The keyboard, when you look at a computer, you will find some keys which, uh, are, which are like those found on an ordinary typewriter. So when you look at those keys, that is what we call a keyboard. The keyboard helps in, in the inputting data to the computer. So when you want to input data to the computer, you have to use a keyboard. Otherwise, without that, the computer may not accept your data. You have to use a keyboard. We also have a mouse. A mouse has got a pointing device, a pointing device called a cursor. It has two. It has a, there is the left one and also the right button. It has two buttons: the left button and the right and the right button. And a wheel is present between the two buttons. It can be used to control the position of a cursor on a screen, but it cannot be used to enter text into, the, into data, into, into computer, sorry. It cannot be used to enter data into computer. That one is called a mouse. We also have another input device. This one is called a scanner. A scanner is an important input device which works more like a photocopy machine. It works more or less like a photocopy machine. A scanner captures images from the source which are then converted into digital form that can be stored on the disk. These images can be edited uh, before they are printed. So a scanner basically is like a, a photocopy machine. It can scan images and very good images. It can even scan certificates. When you look at it, you think it's an original. But of course, they don't have watermark, those ones, those copies. We also have uh, a microphone. It is an output device to input sound that is then stored in digital form. It accepts sound and uh, it's then converted into digital form. The microphone is used for various applications, like adding sound to a multimedia presentation, or even in mixing music. A microphone could be used. We also have another data input device. This one is called a barcode. For example, when you visit a supermarket, you will find those clerks at the counter. Uh, when you want to purchase something, uh, a, a barcode is used 
you don't have to tell him or her the price, the thing that you have picked from the supermarket. That barcode will tell you, will indicate the amount, the cost of that thing, and you will indicate what it is. It is a song, it is a one to be say, and it's cost. So, so barcode readers are also used as input, input devices. It can read quoted data in the form of um, there's some light and some dark lines. So it can read that information quite easily. It's also used in labeling books and also in labeling uh, <coughs> uh, goods in a store or in a supermarket. That's, that one is called barcode reader. And also, a barcode reader can also scan a barcode image and convert it into an alphanumeric value, which is then fed to the computer to which barcode feeder is connected. And then it will have to capture that information and give out that, that information as an output. We also have uh, input devices like uh, optical mark reader. This one, most of us are conversant with it because it is a special type of, of um, an optical scanner. It can recognize uh, any mark made by a pen or a pencil. More especially it's used in checking the answer sheet uh, in the exam, exam papers, in the examination, in the examinations that we normally do. So if there is a multiple choice, for example, when there is where there is a multiple choice, and um, uh, an optical mark reader can he, can he go for the right answer. It detects the right answer among the choices uh, that are there. It will pick the right answer. If it's to pick an answer written, written in pencil and if you write, write it in ink, it will, it will reject. So an optical mark data is speci more especially used in the marking of examinations. It comes in handy when it comes to marking of examinations. Also, in this lesson, we will look at the other components of the central processing unit of a computer. We we'll also look at the other components that are found in the processing unit of a computer. In the CPU, we have what we call arithmetic logic unit, ALU, ALU, arithmetic logic unit. This device is part of a CPU that performs all arithmetic computations, including addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication, and uh, other logical operations. It can detect something which is logical or not logical. Literally speaking, it's like a building block of a CPU. All the mathematical uh, operations are, are done by the arithmetic logic unit. We also have another device called control unit, the CPU. The control unit is responsible for carrying out or executing or storing the results coming out of the arithmetic logic unit. 
within the CPU. Control unit performs the functions of who it fetches it fetches information, it decodes the same information and executes and also it stores the same information and it communicates with both the arithmetic logic unit and other memory devices. In there we also have registers. These registers are temporary storage areas for instructions or data within the processor. The control unit uses the CPU data storage devices similar to a local. It uses, for example, it is a temporary storage. These registers are temporary storage. For example, I can give an example of maybe a cashier in a business. He may he may have a lot of cash and um, keeps the money somewhere in another drawer and it will be used in temporary whenever there is a need for or maybe changing money he picks that money easily from where he has kept so it is just like that so so temporary information normally are stored in the registers and what are these registers these registers we have many for example we have uh, data register is used in microcomputers to temporarily store data being transmitted to or from peripheral device that is data register we also have uh, memory address registers memory address re registers these are used to access data and instructions from memory during the execution phase of uh, an instruction. During the execution phase of an instruction, these ones are used to access that data and instructions from memory. So that one is called memory address register. We also have index register. An index register in a computer a CPU is a processor register used for modifying operator addresses during the run of a computer. Index register it modifies the operation of addresses during the run of of a computer program. We have others called memory buffer registers. A memory buffer register holds the contents of data or instruction read from or written in memory. Uh, it is used to store data, instructions coming from the memory or going to the memory. Uh, those are the registers found in CPU. For I had already told you that the components in a CPU, we have arithmetic logic unit, we also have control unit, and we also have registers. But these registers are many. Data register, index register, eh? there are many. Let's go ahead. And also, we also have external storage devices in our computer. Uh, these ones are many, and uh, their main work is to transfer information to different, to different devices in our computer. And these ones are, uh, one is a compact disk. Most of us, or most of you, know what a compact, a, a compact disk 
recorder or recordable is. We also have a digital first style disc, commonly known as DVT. Those also are external storage devices, but which can transfer information to the computer. We also have flash memory devices, which we commonly use. Uh, those the flash memory devices also can be used to input data to a computer. We also have one called Blu-ray. can also be used to input data to a computer. Now, we look at the output devices. In out output devices, we have the soft, soft copy output devices, and we also have the hard copy output devices. But we are going to begin by looking at the soft copy output devices. One of them is a speaker. A speaker, the sound we receive from a computer, such as me using, comes from a speaker, from a soft, a soft copy. Uh, uh, in the form of sound, and that one is uh, the sound release is from a speaker. We also have a monitor. Visual, visual display unit. When you look at the screen of a computer, you will see some information there. So that one is from, that one is a visual display unit. It's a device from a visual display unit. We also have a projector. A projector is also an output device from the soft copy. You will find a projector projecting image to, to a screen somewhere or to a wall somewhere. That one is also an output device. When it comes to hard copy, printers uh, hard copy devices, devices. We have printers. When we print um, a letter or any other document, what will come out is a hard copy. And that hard copy, you see, an output device. It's, 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 it's from an output device. We also have uh, things like craft plotters when you are drawing maps of uh, maps of, uh, of roads or of, of houses. Those are uh, hard copies from the output devices. And also when we are going to purchase a computer, uh, we have to consider certain factors before buying a computer or before purchasing a computer. First of all, you look at uh, the cost of that computer. Maybe you are buying it for, for the business or for personal use. So you have to know the nature of the computer that you are going to buy and it is cost. And also you have to consider whether it has a, the output devices that we have just learned today. Also you have also to consider the CPU, it is CPU, CPU size 
whether it will work for your business or not. You will also consider this weight, whether it's portable or not. You will also consider whether it will fit into your office or it will be big enough like the mainframe of computers, very good in size. You have to consider such a factors. You have to consider such a factors to ensure that that computer is going to work for you. And it work for you, it must have all the devices necessary to make the computer work effectively. So my good students, uh, as we come to the end of our lesson, I would request you to go back and read widely about the computer hardware. This topic that we have we just learned, the computer hardware, read thoroughly, absorb whatever you are afraid, and make sure that with your computer, in your physical class out there, you will be able to pinpoint things like input devices, uh, like what I've told you about keyboard, mouse, scanners, microphone, barcodes, and others. Also, you, will be able, you should be able to know the processing devices and the types of memory, and also secondary devices and output devices and communication devices such as the microphone and also uh, before purchasing one you should also look at the processing power of that computer before you acquire it you should make sure that it will be a gadget which will work for you which will work for the successful for the success of your business. So with those uh, we come to the end of our lesson and until next time goodbye.